I lost count how many they are in, in a year. But I think Nikata Bradley will agree with me. Then we, uh, that will be followed by 21 days of, 21 days on our knees on 9th. That is on Monday. We start 21, 21 days on our knees. If you are new to this community, every beginning of the term, we normally have a time of prayer and connecting with God. And um, we like doing it that way. And that is how we have come, the, uh, how far we have come. Kama si hiyo maombi, siju kama tungekua. So karibuni sana to a time of prayer and connecting with God, okay? And the whole of this month, we will capitalize on connecting with God. So karibuni sana to a 21 days of uh, on our knees. Devotionals will be sent daily to our groups. If you're not on our WhatsApp group, join so that you don't miss any of those. And then we have uh, Discover Life starting the following day. Uh, if you are excited about Discover Life, you are... That's good, good music to my ears. Because Discover Life comes to change. We help children and young people discover God, discover self, and discover why God created them. And bring all your children, bring them. If you know a neighbor that has a child that finished high school, Mwambi Aje. And then, um, so to register, yeah, see me. And then, if you have been baptized this first term, and you haven't had your certificate, come see me. We would like to start processing that. If you have had a baby dedication this first term, and you don't have your certificate yet, come see me. We would like to, get, uh, to take care of that. But if you would like to get baptized, you got saved, and you've not been baptized, come see me. I would like to baptize you. I would be so happy to do that. And that brings us to the end of our announcement. But I have one last announcement, announcement that I didn't put up there. I want to read it because... Um, oh, yeah, we were not able to talk about... Um, to really appreciate you for supporting the family of um, Mama Nzisa. She's here and... Yes, yes, yes. Uh, she went through a season of bereavement and uh, the community was available and I was able to connect with her after that and uh, she was quite blessed and it was an easy season, okay? And I desire that we are a community that we, when such happens, we will be there for one another and uh, we will make it easier and the burden easier. So Asante Nisana for supporting. But on a sad note is that um, we have lost... Um, a mother to one of our members here and I will read this as it is dear family and friends um, with the family of Nancy Thogo thank you for your for the messages calls prayers and contributions they have brought us great comfort to us as a family and we appreciate each and every one of you mom was promoted to glory on 27th of April 2022 while undergoing treatment at Coptic Hospital, Nairobi. For what we came to know was, okay, bile duct cancer, okay? We humbly accept God's will and know that she is now free from pain and rejoicing in our Father in heaven. Chamuhimu, meetings will be held every day at our family home in Gong, Ololua, the pin is uh, available kwa group. You will find it kwa group. Saturday 30th April and Sunday 1st May at 3 p.m. So leo satisa kamili pale ololua ngong. Monday 2nd um, May and Tuesday 3rd May from 2 p.m. So kesho na Tuesday from 2 p.m. Then that will be available to go. And then kutoka hapo 5 p.m. You are welcome. Okay. While at Coptic, the bill rose to 1.2 million through your support and effort we have managed to raise half a million, which has gone towards paying part of the bill. We, will, we would like to give mom a befitting send-off on Wednesday 11th, May 2022. Now, in order to receive her body, there is a deficit that needs to be taken care of of 1.3. And we are asking you as a community to help this family meet this balance. You can send your contribution to 0713-634-422. The number is Michelle Njeri. So this is not pay bill, it's send money. 0713, and this will be available on, on our WhatsApp group. Um, 634-422. Great. I want to end that uh, announcement at that point. And... Um, 
Everything else will be available at our group, and that is why we ask you to be part of that group. Allow me to invite Pastor Harriet, who comes to share the word today. And today we are starting a new season, a new series. It is the book of Romans, ladies and gentlemen. And as she comes, put our hands together as we invite our speaker for the day. Now, Asante Sana Pasi, we are blessed to have you. And uh, Karibu Sana. Wow, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord and good morning. It's definitely beautiful to see you. It's a new season. The Lord has, has actually given us happy Labor Day for all the wafanyikazi. <laughs> praise the Lord. Yeah, today you will listen times two because my voice is coming less. Um, I don't know, but okay. Thank you. <laughs> My voice is not so good, um, so you will listen keenly. But I am blessed by the Lord to be here today, to hear from him, and to fellowship with all of us before his presence. We are studying, uh, starting a new book. I'm excited about what God will unfold. The Bible says the unfolding of the word of God makes even the simple wise. So I believe that God is going to make us wise and strong by the power of his word. Let's go to the book of Romans. I know um, our time is not as much, so let me spend it on the word. <laughs> let me spend it on the word. Romans chapter 1. It's a very famous chapter. Uh, it, has used, it has been used even in controversial debates. So let's hear what God asked for us. From a, I, I want you to come with your Bible today because we will look at it a lot. <laughs> if you forgot, please do that next Sunday. Don't leave it. Romans chapter 1. Let me read from 1 and 6 first. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and, as, and set apart for the gospel of God. For the gospel, he promised beforehand through his prophet in the Holy Scriptures regarding his son, who has to, his human nature was a descendant of David and who through the spirit of holiness was declared with power to be the son of God by his resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him and for him, his, for his name's sake, we receive grace and apostleship to call people from among the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith. And you also are among those who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints. Grace and peace to you from our God and Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So Romans chapter 1 to around from verse 1 to verse 18, Paul is introducing the participant, he's introducing himself and the people he is writing to. He's also introducing the reason as to why he is writing this letter. So it's a letter. And remember, when Paul, the, the author is Paul, the author of this letter is Paul, and he is the author of 12 other books in the Bible. He has written 13 letters in total. And if Hebrews was written by him, that makes 14. But we don't know whether Hebrews was written by Paul. The author of Hebrews is not known. But at least we know this letter is written by Paul alongside 12 others. This time he was in Corinth. And Corinth, uh, we will... Uh, we, we, we know about First and Second Corinthians. So he was in Corinth, evangelizing to the people in Corinth when he wrote this letter. Now, Paul did not plant the church in Rome. And even when he is writing, he had not met this church in person. He had never been to Rome. It was not a church he planted, and it was not a church he knew the believers there. So I have said his greeting, introduction, and reasons for writing, verses 1 to 17. And from 18 to 32, he begins to talk about the lostness of the non-believer. 
I'm imagining that is how Paul looked like. <laughs> Maybe that is not how he looks like. So let's look at what is critical here uh, and what we can learn. Paul introduces himself by the, these terms. He is a slave of Christ, also called to be an apostle. Now, we know that apostle is a big thing. Even now, an apostle is a big person. Apostle is a big thing. They even have their own shaving styles. So, you know, apostle is not a simple thing. It's a big thing. They have their own voice. They have their own way of doing things. Apostles have done many things. And Paul was an apostle. Not by the, not by the, <laughs> by the shaving style and by the walk and by the talk but because he had planted churches. But remember, apostleship is a gift from Jesus. If you read in the book of Ephesians, the Bible says that Jesus went uh, to the, um, to, he went to hell when, when, they, when they put him on the tomb, when they thought he was dead, after they, they, they crucified on the cross and put him in the tomb. Well, the body was there, but he had gone to hell. And when he went there, he came with gifts and Five are named. Is, uh, he came with uh, the gift of teaching, apostleship, prophet, pastoral, and I've said what? The prophet, the teacher, the pastor, evangelist, and apostle. Those five. He came with them. I think Zilikwa Zimetekwa. They were not staying in the right place. He came with them and gave them to the church. And so Christ is the one who gives this gift. Apostleship is a big gift. It is the, the gift that is associated with planting ministries in places where they don't exist. It is where the gospel advances, where it has not been before. And Paul was this person who was advancing the gospel among the, the Gentiles. And he was doing a lot of work. But instead of calling himself an apostle, instead of, you know, sticking to the title, he says he is a slave of Christ. Because it is important to be a slave before you are an apostle. It is important to do the work before you demand the title. The work and the title go together. But in our days, I know we know of people who really want the title. People want the title, but they don't want the work. To become an apostle is a lot of work. And it is not just work, slavery, work. So he says, first and foremost, he is a slave of Christ. And we know one thing about slaves is that you cannot serve two masters. You cannot be loyal to two masters. Jesus said it himself. He said, you cannot be a slave of God and... God and... The way you're murmuring, you're about to say God and the devil. He did not say that. <laughs> he said you cannot be a slave of both God and money. Money is the biggest competitor of God. It is not actually the, the devil. <laughs> you can't be a slave of both. Because a slave has undivided attention to the master. Undivided loyalty to the master. That is what Paul was. Then God gave him to be an apostle. And he is clear about what he is the apostle for. He is the apostle for the gospel of God. And I will talk about the gospel. Because we have, even nowadays, we have many apostles for many things. Paul is an apostle for the gospel of God. Promised beforehand in the scriptures regarding his son. Now let me tell you three facts about the gospel and what the gospel is. The gospel is God's idea, not from human. It's not from humanity. The gospel is from God. It is God's idea. That is why he is calling it the gospel of God. Its foundations or the foundation of the gospel is God's grace. What do I mean? The gospel is God extending his mercy to a sinner for no reason. God it cannot be explained why God has saved you. There is no reason. God extending his mercy to a sinner for no reason. That is what grace is. Because salvation cannot be earned and it cannot be deserved. 
It is not something you can work for. It is not earned and it is not deserved. It is extension of mercy to a sinner for no reason. Are we together? So the gospel is about, it is about that process of God in his mercy looking at how lost we are, looking at the speed and the rate at which we are continuing to get lost, rescuing us by sending his son to come and save us, extending us mercy to us for no apparent reason. Now, why that is, the, why, why that is so critical to distinguish that that is what the gospel is, is because the gospel has been given so many other definitions. If I teach you about baptism, and baptism is a good thing, and I made my point clear that baptism is through immersion in the water, well, that is true, but it is not the gospel. If I tell you how dedication should happen, and it is a good thing for me to tell you about dedication, and we do dedication the right way, yes, it is good, it's doctrinal, but it is into the gospel. The gospel is primarily about Jesus and what he has done. Praise the name of Jesus. So many people that are not baptized, if they believe Jesus in their heart, they will go to heaven. Even if they were not dedicated, even if they did not follow any church doctrine, Praise the name of Jesus. It is about Jesus. It is about me, a sinner, who was lost and I could do nothing about it. Jesus came to extend mercy to me for no reason. That is the gospel. It is about the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Every sermon that does not talk about Jesus and what he has done isn't the gospel. Every song that does not talk about Jesus and what he has done is not a gospel song. Praise the name of Jesus. It can mention Jesus somewhere. It, mentioning Jesus in my things doesn't make the content gospel. And that gospel is from God. And it is not a recent idea. It is not a recent invention. It was promised by God in the Old Testament. The gospel has not come when Jesus was born by Mary in Bethlehem. The gospel was pronounced way before from the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve sinned and they were hiding and trying to cover their shame. When God came and made for them a clothing with the animal, God killed an animal to give them the the, the, the a cloth of skin, he was actually showing them the sacrifice that would be given for their redemption. And then God did pronounce to Eve that very day of sin that the seed of the woman shall crush the head of the serpent. He was talking about Jesus. It's a very long-term plan. God has been on it for very, throughout history, he's been rolling out his salvation plan throughout it's not a recent idea. That is why we can't edit it. We can't give it a new version. It cannot become something else. It is what it has been from all those ages. And I've said the gospel is about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Paul is very particular because in those days there were many people who are called Jesus. It is, only, it is not only Jesus Christ who was called Jesus. And you can just give, a, give back to your child and call them Jesus. It was a common name. So to distinguish which Jesus we are talking about, he said it is this specific one who is a descendant of David. That specific Jesus. It is the one we are talking about. The one who is also the son of God. We cannot receive salvation by giving offerings. We can't receive salvation by tapping into a man of God. We cannot receive salvation by any other way. Jesus Christ alone is the way to salvation. So that is what Paul is about. He's a slave, he's an apostle, and he is clear about what the assignment is. The assignment is the gospel of God concerning his son, Jesus. Is that clear? 
He's so clear. Then he tells them something so profound that believers struggle to believe even today. And I did, I, I think even then, they, be, they struggled to believe. He tells them two very heavy words. Or to my, to my understanding, they are, they are heavy. Verse 7. To all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints. People, Christians, believers, children of God find it so difficult to believe that they are dearly loved by God. And that they are saints. It's a good place to tell your neighbor, you are dearly loved by God. And you are a saint. You know, even the way we are saying it, we are like, ish, ish. Are we really loved by God? Are we really loved by God? Believers are dearly loved by God. If he could love the world, he loved us before we made a decision for him. This is how the love of God is made manifest for us, that while we were still sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. If he could love us when we had no idea that he loved us, how about when we have responded to him? How about when we have responded to the call of salvation? We are dearly loved by God. And the enemy would want you to believe otherwise. He would like you to doubt whether God really loves you. You know those questions that he asked if did God really say? Do you think God really loves you? Believers are dearly loved by God. And they are saints. Let me dwell on this point of they are saints. Because you will hear every week someone saying, no one is holy. No one is righteous. No all of us are sinners. And we like those statements. Because they they, we feel like that is the truth. Imagine it's not. All of us are not sinners. Mm -mm. That one of no one is righteous. Imagine it's a lie. I'll show you how it is not true. There's a, there's a yes and a no of it. There's a truth and there's a lie in it. Believers struggle to believe that they are saints because they think saints are perfect people. Or others think sainthood is something you achieve when you die. Like when you are a senior person in the church, then you die after some years, you become a saint. <laughs> I believe that. These ones are living ones. These are living saints. It's telling them you are a saint. Because sainthood, to be a saint, is a legal position. It is a legal position concerning your sin. The moment you believe in Jesus, and you guys know when you go to a court of law and the judge is making a case, he is, he is to declare you on two categorical places. You're either innocent or guilty. You can never be in between. Can you be in between? When he is making the judgment, done. It, you must be fall on either, on either side. And this is what it says. We are, we were sinners, desperately hopeless. There is nothing we can do about our sin. We cannot remove the blemish of our sin because it cannot be washed by water. It is bad. It is stinking. It is horrible. You can't deal with it. But when you believe in Jesus, when you put your faith in Jesus, then in the courts of heaven, where people are said to be either guilty or innocent, you are declared innocent. The righteous judge removes your guilt, not on the account of what you have done, not on the account of the way you have washed your sin, not on the account of anything. By receiving Jesus in your heart, 
through repentance and faith. That's all you need to do. You need to repent and you need to put your faith in Jesus. The moment you repent and put your faith in Jesus, you believe that he died and he died for your sin and rose again on the third day and he is coming back. The moment you believe that with all your heart, all a process of declaring a guilty sinner who repent starts. And that process of declaring a guilty sinner who repent a saint is called justification. You are justified. The righteousness of Christ is credited to you. The banks understand that. Or the people who did debit and credit. Akuna kitu umefanya, you've just believed on Jesus. Your record of wrong is erased permanently. That is why when God forgives you, it's different from when human beings forgive you. When human beings forgive you, they forgive you right now, but they cannot be able to go back to your past and forgive it. And that is even where the systems, the, the Jewish system of forgiveness was failing. Because when you kill a goat today for the sake of your sin, the blood of the goat is not able to go to yesterday and the day before. And that, it cannot clear the sin that is in your history. The blood of Jesus is able to go back to your history and erase the record of wrong. Praise the name of Jesus. So you, that is how come you become a saint. Because your record of wrong does not exist. And then what is reading in your account it's a gift. It's the righteousness of Jesus. It's a gift. Your account is credited the righteousness of Jesus. It says, Abraham believed God. It was credited to him righteousness. Praise the name of Jesus. So you are a saint. Saints are not perfect. And as we keep reading the book of Romans, I know the questions that will come. We will be able to get it from the scriptures. Praise the name of Jesus. So, I am saying, sainthood is a legal position. It is not about behaviors. It's not about behaviors. It's a legal position. Legally, you are not guilty of sin. You have been declared a saint by the righteousness of Jesus. And what have you done? Just putting your faith on, on Jesus. That is why I love him. You cannot earn it. You can't earn salvation. Brothers and sisters, there's nothing you can do and earn it. You cannot pray yourself into salvation. You can't fast yourself into salvation. You can only receive it by faith. So that no man may boast. Praise the name of Jesus. We cannot boast about it. It has not come as a result of works. It has come as a result of I said the foundation of salvation is grace. And what is grace? It's God extending mercy to a sinner for no reason. Now Paul continues to write and tells them in verse 8, First I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is being reported all over the world. God whom I serve with my whole heart in preaching the gospel of his son is my witness how I constantly remember you in my prayers all, at all times. And I pray that now, at, least, at last, God's will, the way be opened for me to come to you. I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. That is, that you, that, that you and I may mutually encourage, be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. I do not want to be unaware, to, I, I don't want you to be unaware, brothers, that I have planned many times to come to you, but I've been prevented from doing so until now, in order that I might have a harvest among you, just as I have had among other Gentiles. 
So when he is writing to them, he's telling them, I would like to come and see you. And what, are, what is motivating faith, uh, Paul to go and see the church in, in Rome is because the church in Rome was trending. And it was trending on a, gro- a global ale- arena. The news about their faith were being heard all over the world. I read that and I was like, Lord, what is trending about this church? If we were to trend, would it be about our faith in Jesus Christ? What would it be about? If you were to trend, like five minutes of trending globally, yourself as a believer, what would it be about? This church was trending because of their faith in Jesus. It was being heard all over the world. Paul tells them that God himself is a witness that he prays for them constantly. Now this comes my second challenge. This is a church he has never met. These are people he does not know. But God himself is a witness that he prays for this church constantly. Oh my God, I ask myself, now leave the church in Rome the one that I have never seen or come into contact with, the church at Light Spring Chapel and Bakashi. What is God a witness of? Some of you brothers and sisters, God is a witness how you are accusing one another day and night. God is a witness how you are complaining and grumbling day and night. God is a witness how you are not praying. Some of you, God is a witness how you are constantly praying for the church. God is a witness of what we are doing. I pray that when, the, when, when, the, when his record of witness is opened, would it be found that some of us, half the church, three quarters of the church, is constantly praying for the church. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, this one that we know, you know Paul is constantly praying for the church he has never met. Like me praying for a church in Ukraine. How many of us are praying for the church in Ukraine? Church in Russia. No, we are so preoccupied by the oil, the price of oil. If our prayer extends beyond, Lord, thank you for the food. If we remember to actually thank him for the food. The next thing will be about our bills. And we will pray about them for the next many minutes until amen. Now, please insert somewhere a prayer for the church. I would like to be remembered as one who prayed for the church constantly. Because I can complain. And God is a witness. Now, that is what is scaring me. (laughs) God is a witness. If I am complaining and accusing people all the time, that's what I'm doing. But am I praying about it? Am I praying? Am I praying about those things that are not working in the church? Are they bothering me so much that I am praying about them? Or I am just... And your God is a witness what you are doing. <laughs> Paul, had, I have said, had never visited this church. And he was delayed by something. Something delayed him from being able to go. And he was angry about delays. And you guys know delays are, are annoying. Do delays annoy you? Eh? Do delays annoy you? De- delays are not interesting, Sindio. No, this is an international trip, Sindio. An afar kwenda international trip is delayed all the time. As in it is, ah! This delay, I want to go here, I want to reach here, but it is not coming forth. I have to ask to think about, you know, what causes delay? And what do we do when we are delayed? He has not told us what delayed him here. He's not told us. But we know When Daniel was praying, the day he started to pray, his answer was released by God. 
But it was delayed in the air for 21 days by the prince of Persia. He was not able to receive a response. Because a demonic force opposed the response. There's a time Paul wanted to go and preach in another city, the book of Corinthians. And the angel of the Lord delayed him. The angel of the Lord did not want him to go there. Even there's a time they were planning a trip to go elsewhere. And at night they saw a vision of a man calling from Macedonia. So there are times this delay is caused by God himself. It is God does not want you to go at that place. And there are times it is a demonic force that is causing the delay. So what do you do while in the delay? You might not be able to remove it. Because if the angel of the Lord is standing on your way, if the angel of the Lord is causing the delay, he is mightier than you. What will you do? You will have to wait, right? If it is a demonic force, what will you do? You will keep at prayer. You will keep at it until the Lord sends his battalion to help you. So delays will be in life. Delays will be there. Thank God for Paul. When he was delayed, he wrote this letter. If he had not been delayed, there would be no book of Romans in the Bible today. Because he would not have written to them. He wrote to them because he was delayed. This delay was beneficial to the church. It was annoying him. It was so bad on him. But all things work together for good. Something good can come out of your delay. It is not all bad. You can do something productive while well in the delay if you keep in touch with the Holy Spirit. There is something called the pace of grace. <coughs> what are you doing while in the delay? But then you can, you can spend all your time complaining about the delay. You can spend all the time hating the demons that are standing on your way. You can spend all the time also going to the... If it was a delay, you can spend your time. Ukienda kufanya nini? Kuonewa. Kipeleka kuku za white, na za black, na za red. Because delays are frustrating. Delays are frustrating. You've waited for a job for a long time. Waited for a business breakthrough for a long time. Waited for a child for a long time, waited for a, for a spouse, for a long, delays are not interesting, waited for a situation to change, it is not changing. What do you do while in the delay? Paul writes this letter to us while in the delay. Maybe it's a time to pause and ask the Lord to give you something worthwhile to do while you, while you wait. God, open my eyes to see what I can do that is of value while I wait. You know, people have messed their lives completely while in the delay. It is where Abraham receives advice from Sarah. He said, this thing is taking forever, my friend. I think that is what God, what God said. Where? Use wisdom. Use your head. And while you're using your head, you miss it all together. But the Lord give you wisdom. I don't know whether you're the one who is in the delay. The Lord will give you wisdom to handle the delay. That you will negotiate your delay in a godly way. Remember that all the people who wrote the Bible did not know that they were writing the Bible. So Paul was not writing to us, definitely. He did not know that he was writing to us. in Nikama, we in a leak, for exam. Like, it was meant for another co context, then it, it comes. They did not know. If they knew they were writing the Bible, they would not have written it because they would have been scared. They would not have written it. They thought they were writing a letter to the Romans people and full stop. He did not know that it would leak to all the world and all the generation. One reason why we believe the word of God is divine 
is because we believe there's a divine order. The word of God is written by 40 authors across 1,600 years. 1,600 years. And they do not meet. Now, each author contributes, complements the other author, either adding or clarifying. They don't contradict each other, yet they do not meet. Each one contributed their bit faithfully without meeting the other one. Is in that one master author. Must be one mind. That is why we believe it is God's. But he did not know he was writing the Bible. So he writes this while in his delay. I don't know what I will do in my delay. God help me, give me something of value to do while I am waiting. And then he tells them that he is, he is writing about the gospel. Of course, we talked about the gospel. Because the gospel is the power of God. The gospel is the power. And we have said the gospel is about Jesus. It's about Jesus and the work he has done. It is the power of God for salvation of everyone who believes. And we said salvation comes by grace and it is only received by faith. It is for everybody. Paul is clear. The gospel is for everybody. I will quote what Pastor Dante said yesterday. Is it yesterday or the day before yesterday? During the Kesha. Someone coming to him and wondering, now, You've been talking about this salvation, this salvation. But I'm a Catholic. Can I get saved? Because someone has been maybe preaching a wrong, a wrong doctrine out there, trying to tell people that there are some people that are eligible for salvation and others are not eligible for salvation. Salvation is for everybody. Everybody. The Catholic, the Jew, the Gentile. The wise, the foolish, the educated, non-educated, the rich, the poor, everybody is eligible for the gospel. It hurts the master when we segregate or even when we choose in our minds whom we are going to share with the gospel and whom we are not going to share the gospel with because it is for everybody. There are people that look irredeemable and that is why we don't share the gospel with them. They are lost in drug and substance abuse. They are lost in whatever it is that they are doing. And if they are so lost, Baka, you have lost hope for them. Now, it is not your job to describe or to determine who is going to be saved or who is not going to be saved. Because the gospel, Paul does not say the gospel has power. Uh -uh. He says the gospel is the power. And there's a difference. The gospel is the power. You don't have to do anything about it, brothers and sisters. You don't have to anoint them with so many things. You don't have to. The gospel is the power. When we don't share it, they don't receive the power. Because they don't need anything else. They don't need 40 days of fasting and prayer. They need the gospel. The gospel is the Are we together? The gospel is the power. The gospel knows what to do when it gets where it's supposed to get. It knows what to get. Don't feel like you're responsible to cause it to go through the right. How it will travel from the mind to the heart to the conviction is the work of the Holy Spirit. The gospel is the power. And it is for everybody. It's for everybody. Then now he has finished he has finished to introduce himself, introduce the people he's writing to, telling them why he is writing, and telling them what he is writing about. Now he tells, he goes to begin the content of the letter. It's a long letter. This letter has got about 16 chapters. He begins now to unfold the content. He says, from verse 18 to the end, He's talking about how lost the non-believer is. How lost the person who has not believed in Jesus. You know, there are people who say they will not go to church because the people who go to church are pretenders. Or they will not, they will not believe in the gospel because the people, oh, the people who are said to be believers are not working right. So they will not believe. 
Mesikia hata high school kwa CU. The reason they don't go to the CU ni kwa sababu CU kwa not pretenders. You've heard them. Eh, sasa hawa ataki kukua pretender. He's saying, what, how tutakucha kwa hawa? We will come to the people of the faith. Let's start with how lost an unbeliever is. And when you see how lost an unbeliever is, then you see how important it is that the gospel of Jesus reaches their ears and reaches their soon. 18. I have 10 minutes. I don't know where we will go with that. But this is what he says. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the God, godless and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them. Because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities like eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. Paul is saying everyone knows God. Everybody. God has made himself known. The wrath of God is coming against the, God, the godliness and the wicked men because what people know, what people do, they know the truth. People know the truth. What they have done is suppress it so they can live the lie that they want. People know the truth because God has made it clear to them. God has made it plain. The whole creation displays His qualities and his eternal power and his divine nature, they are not a secret. They are known. But though they know God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal men and birds and animals and reptiles. Paul is saying, living a lie is deliberate. People know the truth. People know who God is. They have refused to glorify him. They have refused to give him thanks. They have refused him to be God in their lives. Not that they don't know him. They do. Wanajua kulenga tu. Praise the name of Jesus. And because they have told themselves that they are wise, they have told themselves that they know, then they have become futile in their minds. And their hearts have become dark. If we continue to read, you will see that when people have continued to insist living a life of sin, a life of a lie, though they know the truth, but they have suppressed them intentionally. They have suppressed the truth so that they can live the lie that they want to live. Therefore, God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts. And a list of sin is, is shared there. You know, we think about God's judgment or God's wrath. When you think about God's wrath, Nikitukamaganivi. God's wrath looks like floods. You know, kama zile za Noah, floods. Ama drought, ama kitu kama corona, looks like God's wrath. Even when, yeah, vitu kubwa kubwa, sindio? Paul is saying, one effective way, one way God has showed his wrath upon men, one way he is showing us how angry he is, is that he has walked out of people and let them be. To be abandoned by God is a big, big thing. God has abandoned them in their sin. 
So because they don't see tsunamis, they don't see droughts and floods and those big things, they don't think they are under God's judgment. To be left by God to perish in your sin is judgment. I dread, I fear that God would get to a point where he doesn't even want me anymore. No, he doesn't talk to me. See, I, I, have, I know the truth. I have suppressed it. Chose a lie and I'm living it. He keeps quiet. He keeps silent. And you think you have made peace with him. No. You've not made peace. He's just abandoned you. It's a desperate place to be. Someone said this week, it's a dangerous denial. It's a dangerous denial. If God is not doing big punishment in your life, and you know you're living a lie. It's not because he can't see. I pray none of us here at Life Spring Chapel and Bakasi get to a place where God has actually left you be. Ka hivo onataka. And the Spirit of God does not prompt you anymore. Even your conscience does not feel anything anymore. And you have moved on in your life. You feel like you have, you've gotten it. No, you've not gotten it. You are under God's judgment. That is why you don't hear him anymore. He's left you in your sin. It's a bad thing. When God, you know we know, normally God lifts people from one level of glory to another. When God leaves a situation, when God leaves an environment, it moves from degradation to degradation. It moves backward to backward to backward. And Paul is explaining how this degradation happens. It degrades the mind. The mind becomes so deprived that even what is obviously wrong becomes right to this person because their mind is constantly degrading from degradation to degrade to degradation. And even their own body begins to degrade. Everything about them degrades from one level of degradation to another. At that point, because the mind is degraded, the heart is degrading, the spirit is degrading, the, the, even the body is degrading, then what is not natural becomes natural to them. God abandons them. And not only them, there's a line there that is talking about those who do those things, and they are a list of them. Please go and read the whole Romans. Those who do, and those who approve of those things. Because sometimes we feel like we are excused. Like, you know, you are not the producer of porn. But if you watch it, you and that person, you're together in that judgment. You're not the producer of this product. You're not the one who's done it, but the one who does it, and the one who promotes it, and the one who watches it, and the one who shares it. All those people are together in that scene. To cover much, brothers and sisters. We, were, we are not to share in that sin completely. Because God is angry at those who do it and those who approve it. Either silently or loudly. I don't know ways in which we are proving sin. We are allowing it to rule in our lives. And we are allowing degradation in our homes and in our lives. And then, let me just read, uh, just for the sake of reading, uh, so that you hear. Therefore God gave them over in the sinful desires of their heart to sexual impurity for the degradation of their bodies with one another. 
They exchange the truth of God for a lie and worship and serve created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Amen. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful, to shameful lust. Even their women exchange natural relations for unnatural ones. If in the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed in, indecent acts with other men and received in themselves the penalty for their perversion. There are things as people are doing, especially these sins of homosexuality that have become a gray area. Nowadays, the Bible says, as people continue to do those things, they are receiving in themselves the penalty of the sin. They are receiving it right now. The penalty of the full penalty of their deprivation, of their perversion. No wonder they don't even know because they are, they are consuming the wrath. They are eating it every day. Furthermore, since they did not think it is worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, he gave them over to a depraved mind. To do what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness. Evil. Greed. Envy. Murder. Strive. Deceit. Malice. They are gossipers. Slanderers. God haters. Insolent. Arrogant. Boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Although they know God's righteous decree. That's what I want you to hear. And those who do such things deserve death. They, do, they not only continue to do these very things, but they also approve of those who practice them. When people read Romans chapter 1, they think maybe it is just a chapter to condemn homosexuality only. No, it is mentioned amongst other sins, gossip, malice, murder, all these things that are becoming a part of people's lives as they have refused the truth and embraced a lie. And they are saying, people know, you and I know that the consequences of sin is, we know. It is not hidden. The consequences of sin is brothers and sisters. The result is death. We know. The result is death. We know it, but we are living in days of dangerous denial. We don't want to accept the truth that even when the Bible says that there's actually a second death coming, we don't believe it. Because we live in dangerous denial. May the Lord have mercy. I want us to pray.
by the grace of God and they will operate marked optimally in the edification of the body of Christ. Thank you for declaring us saints. Though we have not done anything to earn it, just by mercy, you've extended mercy to me for no reason. I cannot explain. There's nothing I did so that I could get this mercy. It's just an act of grace. So I thank you for your grace that has found me and changed me. Thank you for giving me your righteousness, the righteousness of Jesus. So even as I look and walk about in this world that you said we are not, you will not remove us, remove us from it, I walk with the confidence that I am dearly loved by God, that you have made me a saint. When you look at me, you don't look at me as a guilty person. You look at me as one who has been saved by the blood of Jesus. I pray that God, you deliver me from deliberate will, deliberate love for sin. Deliver me, Lord, that my heart will not be darkened by sin. My mind will not be depraved. My mind will not degrade by rejection of the truth. Oh God, I pray that I will be quick to receive and embrace and live by the truth. My life will be planted on the truth. In our lives as a church community, Lord, we will be planted on the truth. Because every time we plant our lives, our families, our relationships on falsehood, we become impoverished. Lies impoverish. Lies impoverish. With the foundation upon which we are building our lives be the foundation of truth. The truth of the word of God. That we will not exchange the glory of the immortal God with the things of this world. We will not worship created things, but we will be worshippers of the only true and living God. The pressure that is in the world to look at the world and to look at things from a different perspective. Lord, our perspective will be so biblical. Open our eyes to see what we need to see. Deliver us, O oh God that we will not suppress the truth where we know the truth we will stand for the truth where the truth is Lord we will be where the truth is we will not suppress the truth the spirit of God will help us witness for the truth make us witnesses of the truth oh Lord may we know the truth no wonder Jesus said they will know the truth and the truth shall set them free found our lives on the truth, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. If you're here, you've not known the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior. If you have not received Jesus as the Lord in your heart, you can't remember yourself receiving salvation. Let me not lie to you. Coming to church will not change your eternal destiny. Believing in Jesus will change your eternal destiny. Do not be fooled by being a church member. Do not be fooled by even adhering to the church doctrine. The thief who received Jesus on the cross did not get an opportunity to go to any Sunday service. But Jesus promised them paradise because they believed on Jesus. Are you here? And you know you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus. Do you want him to be Lord and Savior over your life today? Please lift up your hand wherever you are. Lift up your hand if you want to receive Jesus in your heart. Don't fear anybody. It is your life. It is you that you want Jesus. If you're here, and you know for real, there is a lie you're living. It's a place where you're suppressing the truth for an advantage that you want to take. 
there's a sin that you're deliberately living in because it has an advantage for you or for your business, for something you're doing, and you're suppressing the truth. I will not tell you to lift your hand. I will not tell you to come here. But I will tell you to talk to Jesus about it. That Jesus will release you from that falsehood. Jesus will release you from every kind of falsehood. You can still get the breakthrough but founded on the truth. The Lord release you, deliver you from every kind of lie, from every kind of sin. Glory to Jesus. 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 Praise you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Well, let's appreciate Pastor Harriet. Great. And now let's appreciate our Lord. And say, it is not gospel if it is not about the good news and the good news that Jesus saves. The good news that we have a redeemer, we have a savior. If it's anything than that, it's not the good news. Ni news too, ni story too. Okay? Yes, and also the fact that we are a people that need redemption and we are not the savior. Great, I am blessed today. I don't know whether you are blessed today, but I truly am. As you prepare to give, um, you can uh, give us the last slide. I think it has the page. As you prepare to give, and uh, maybe if you're not new to this community, you know the drill. I just want to share a story. I when I was reading Romans chapter 1, I was reminded of a time I was arrested because of um, the mask situation. And... Uh, it's not because I didn't have a mask, but it's because I hadn't put it on. It was still very new to us, and uh, then is when we people get used to people used to get arrested, and I was um, arrested at Kwandege, and I was, um, you know, with other people we were shown around. You know how the cops wana kupigisha lapumta ndio iwe funzo kwa wengine walio na tabia kama zako, and at that point. I saw myself as Paul, you know, and scripture started coming. It's not a very deep story. Stop thinking that he, there is a punchline to it. But I, later I was uh, thrown into the cell, and uh, in that, you know, the piano makes it look so deep. And uh, in there, I, I thought, how about I write a letter as I wait? So <laughs> I wrote a letter. <laughs> It was a true letter, true story. I wrote a letter to the church at Kwandege because I had started the move. <laughs> so I wrote a letter to the church at Kwandege and Embakasi. And I told them, to the church at Kwandege and Embakasi, your servant is going through hard times. Stay strong. <laughs> Just in case something happens, keep the faith. I will be coming back for you every minute. I shared with someone. I can't remember who I shared with, but I did write a, a letter. And uh, if that is what Paul was experiencing, then I understand. But I know it can't even be compared to what these guys went through. Anyway, it's time to give, and we give to pay bill number eight zero five one hundred. If you don't have cash, but if you have cash, ni wakati wako kujambele na kutoa sadaka. Because I know you brought something to the Lord and sometimes it's not finances, it's not money, it's not monetary, it's a gift you brought to the house of the Lord. It could be unga, it could be nguo, it could be something. We have the blue baskets for that. But if you have money, cash that you've brought to the house of the Lord for the kingdom and the edification of the ministry, we have the baskets that we have here. But if you have money on M-Pesa, the procedure is very simple. Go to pay bill, go to M-Pesa, toolkit, same toolkit, M-Pesa, and um, pay bill number, um, 
1.80. Before pay bill number, there is something else. Eh? That is uh, buy goods and services. Yes, buy goods and services, pay bill number 805100, and then the rest of the information is here. The signature is appropriate. Um, is it tithe? Is it towards benevolence? Is it towards a project here, church? Give towards that. But if you don't have your money on M-Pesa, Tafadali Njombele, we need to end the service shortly. So, Karibuni Sana. Just to remind you of the announcements, we start our 21 days on our knees on 10th. So, please be available to do that. It will be good to do that as a community. But also to remind you, um, sorry, on 9th, but on 10th, we have Discover Life. And uh, bring your young people, bring your ex candidates. Lastly, <laughs> Bella. Bella is just amazing. Lastly, um, it's, lo it, it's, it's long since we met in our small groups, and I know you are asking ourselves, oh my gosh, time. But don't to ask us to take some time and gather in your small groups. Leaders of the small groups. Oh, before we do the small groups, and we will not stay, eh? we will give you questions that you can look at in the course of the week because we already have a plan for our community time. But I want to recognize the presence of visitors. Kunawageni, you are visiting with us for the first time. Are you here? You are visiting with us for the first time. Just, you know, Tumkono. Because of time, we will not ask you to come and sing. We will skip that today, so you are lucky. But again, you are visiting with us for the first time. All right. It must be your first time, is it? All right. Sour. Please tell us your name if you don't mind. There is a lady seated behind you. She will project your voice just in case you feel like you want to chill. So just stand and say hi to us. Tafadali. Tumpige makofi anapo simama. Gladys, all right. Where do you come from? Hapa tu karibu. Oh, all right. Karibu sana, and uh, come again next Sunday. All right, great. Anyone else? See, simple. Okay, Santeni sana. I think we can end at that, and um, ask you to please. In the next five minutes before you leave. Take some time and just connect with the people in your small groups. What to a pipeline? You have a leader. Where is uh, Masi? Masi's turn. 